T-R-A You're asking the army guy how to spell? <laughs> First of all, f yeah, you're, you're, you're a vet, right? Uh, <laughs> what do you think about the war in Afghanistan? And I'm looking at this, like, 18-year-old, and I'm like, I don't really want to get into that, dude. That's going to take so long to talk about, and we're just out here on, a, on like, a smoke break. <laughs> and, and, and then he's, he hits me with this. He's like, I think we should just glass all of Afghanistan. And I'm like, oh, f one of those people. <laughs> I was like, a oh, very fuck. hot take. Very hot take. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the rest of the world would appreciate us doing that, but... Good on you. I hope you never go into politics. If you do get, you can't do that to humans, right? Like, are you a sociopath? Like, I uh, honestly was just like, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to continue smoking <laughs> my cigarette and uh, check my phone now. Because I was in my douchebag vet phase where I was wearing multicam backpacks and just all the veteran apparel. So I was just screaming, I'm a veteran, look at me. I, I just went through a phase, man, where just all my clothes were vet apparel. <laughs> you have a multicam backpack? Yeah, I, had, I, I literally oh, just my, my issued backpack. I was just wearing it. You got to which keep was, that? Oh, dude, I'm Air Force. I got to keep a lot of shit. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. All I got to keep was the fucking whoopee. I didn't get to keep my whoopee, so you at least have that, but I don't. Oh, it'd be so hard to explain. It's a field jacket liner, but it is so soft and warm. Okay, it's a poncho liner, basically, is what it's supposed to be. You never use it for that. It is a blankie? It is the coziest blanket ever? You're, you're giving away our military secrets to the civilians. <laughs> now we'll never be able to be a whoopee jacket. They're all going to be buying out the whoopees on Amazon. <laughs> Ooh, can we talk about favorite mil like civilian questions to military that you randomly get asked in at inappropriate times? So many. Please, you start. <laughs> My Okay, I might be coming out of the gate with something a little too strong, but... Have you ever killed anyone? I got asked that in the same smoke pit area at this college as the other guy who was talking about blowing up the Middle East. Uh, and I was just like, oh, yeah. They were just kind of like, oh, cool, man. I got to get to class. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there's no snow. It's not a good social interaction on either part. Yeah, yeah. No one, no one ever no. likes the answer. <laughs> yeah, no one ever likes the answer if it is affirmative. And if it's a no, then you're just going to be like, oh, what did you even do while you are in the Air Force or military? <laughs> what I get a lot is, like, have you ever seen someone die? Like, it's so, for some reason, like, 18-year-olds and, like, the younger, like, adults and everything have this obsession with death. And as soon as they find out I'm a veteran, they're like, what's it like? They're dead. There's nothing glamorous about it. Like, they just, you know parties everyone's gathered on drinking and everything and we'll be playing like fucking uh like rage cage a drinking game or like flip cup or something and so i'll be like oh you're a veteran and they'll just ask you in the middle of the fucking there's like 15 20 people around the table and i'm just like <laughs> fucking what like they, they'll ask you the most wildest questions about like death and everything while you're trying to fucking drink a beer like <laughs> once the war came to a close when they found out i was an afghan vet they're like so tell me what you think and i'm like why am I oh suddenly the authority on telling you what you should think about the war in Afghanistan? You weren't paying attention the last 20 years. Why do you care now? <laughs> Why did you decide to dox yourself? Honestly, I was just kind of bugged by, like... Obviously, the VR setting kind of did not lend itself well to people being, like, automatically assuming that I am who I say I am. Even if all the veterans in said comment section are like, yeah, this guy's 100% legit, there's just going to be someone out there that's like, this guy's a fake. <laughs> Why do you have, like, a $3,000 helmet? Like, wouldn't that be something they would have you give back? Like, why did you get to keep that? They're fitted for us. Wait, what? They're fitted for us, so there's no point in them keeping them. What the fuck? Is this where the entire military budget goes to? So you get the Air Force? You gotta keep your fucking backpacks, you gotta keep your fucking <laughs> oh, okay, hold on. All the army, I can hear all the army of marines getting frothy at the mouth. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna stir up too much shit. <laughs> Uh, for my, my helmet, for example, though, like, I would get, like, a, there's, like, small, or small, medium, 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 large, large, extra large, all these different helmet sizes, but, like, it's never quite right, so the way you would get it to fit is there's these foam pads on the inside of it, and you just rearrange those things, like, they're deck chairs on the Titanic, until it didn't hurt to wear it. That would be the best you would get, and you're like, all right, cool. <laughs> mine was fitted to mine, but, like, they had the preset sizes, and apparently, and this is coming from the AFB guys, I have an enormous abnormally shaped head not that my head is fucking weird but like 
I was just in a weird range between sizes, and so like, oh, they, they put, <laughs> fuck, dude, I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even have brought that up. They had to put like special, like they had to cut the foam for my head. God damn it, dude, I shouldn't have said shit. She always makes like cookies or like some kind of pastry or something, but it's it's just not quite normal. Like, there's always got to be something extra about it. I'm just like, you could have just made chocolate chip cookies, but no, you made zucchini chocolate chip cookies. Like, Ugh, why? <laughs> like, yeah, like, she, she just made, like, bless her soul. Like, they always, like, even the zucchini chocolate chip cookies, they're good. It's fucking great. I've missed this so much, because I've, I've just surrounded by people. Oh, fuck off. Dude, why is it crawling like that? <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> it like limps forward. It was either Father's Day, Mother's Day, or Christmas. At some point, we we just been there for a little bit. We're talking with my mom and everything. I'm talking with like my family, my brothers, sisters there. And then my dad's like, "Hey, come to the living room. I want to show you some videos." Because he recently discovered YouTube, I guess, and he's found he can find anything on YouTube. And so he just had me sit down on the couch, and he started turning on videos of like police shooting people. And he's like, "It's fucking. They blew this guy's head off with a shotgun." I'm like, "You're a fucking." psychopath stay the fuck away from me i just had to sit there and be like haha merry christmas you know whatever fucking holiday it was you'll fucking love this shit you're a veteran i was like yeah <laughs> do you see that that blood <laughs> shot that's how hard his heart was beating it shot the blood to the ceiling like <laughs> people highly underestimate what an explosion can do to someone because of like action movies and call of duty games and things like that where it's just like yeah these things explosions happen it kills the person but they're they're fl they're thrown very far and they, they lose some body parts or like saving private ryan where like an artillery round lands underneath a dude's like leg and it blows off his leg just nicely above the knee or whatever and it's like no man like 155 millimeter house around landing everything in like 20 meters is now like fucking pink mist like you've been liquidated hollywood explosions have like a lot of fucking napalm to get you like a nice big orange oh fire yeah explosion and in real life it's just like brown clouds <laughs> i mean you see that brief like quarter of a second maybe not even that much like a tenth of a second of a fiery explosion and then it's all just like brown i think this was like my second year in the military and i just come back from employment so i was doing still doing like my in processing stuff and they're like we've got an all call today you've got we've got to everyone's got to be in the in the auditorium at you know 9 a.m and i'm like fuck you i'm doing my in processing and they're like no you're gonna be there or you're gonna get fucking paperwork and i'm like fine it must be some important training 9 a.m rolls around and they uh there's a person from medical up there with a slide that says larp on it oh my god <laughs> and they proceed to tell us that several people got injured during life larping over the weekend and that uh they're going to teach us the proper ways of how to larp so that we don't get injured <laughs> Fuck you, I shot guns out of planes. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, I could tell that this was thrown together in like 15 minutes by this person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it was like, they hydrated. <laughs> don't hit each other too hard. <laughs> As I mentioned, I loved smoking before I joined. I knew once I got out, I was going to go back to smoking. I was just counting down the days to getting out so I could have a, you know, a little smoking toke. Uh, my brother had some weed and I asked him if I could uh, have, have some of his and I smoked it and proceeded to lose my fucking mind. I lost my shit and like broke down and cried to him. I think I, what I said was there was so much that just happened in Afghanistan and that's pretty much like all I said and he just saw me crying and that was like the general trend for weed for a long time. Like I smoke it uh, and I either have a panic attack about like fuck dude I'm in school my grades this is really stressing me out or it'd be fuck I'm fucked up I need to like go talk to someone about this you would think that somebody after having that experience would be like no nah, I'm gonna stay away from this I have always been of the mind <laughs> that I will <laughs> I'm a fucking psych psychopath apparently I'm just like you know what you're a masochist I'm gonna try I'm, <laughs> I'm a masochist I'm like you know what uh, maybe that was indica maybe let me try some sativa oh maybe it's this kind of flower uh, maybe it's like these, these terpenes and this are probably fucking oh, you yeah, try, maybe I try everything <laughs> well fuck maybe Maybe flour just does it to me now. Maybe I need to fucking dab. I got told recently, um, because I know nothing about drugs really, uh, that if people are lighting from the bottom, it's time to go. If they're lighting from the top, you need to plant it and stay. I, would, I will say though, uh, smoking and having panic attacks did allow me to go to Alaska. I, uh, I smoked a dab one time with my brother 
got so fucking ridiculously high and have such a bad time that I called my mom out of the blue and I'm like, oh, I'm really stoned. <laughs> I'm freaking out. Well, okay, uh, mm -mm, calm down. It's okay. You want to come to Alaska? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I called my mom so much in Korea, which is drunk at like 4 a.m. for us, which was like fucking noon over there. And she was just like, hey, sweetie. <laughs> fucking pissed drunk out of my mind, I don't even know what the fuck I was saying. <laughs> hey mom. How long have you had sleep paralysis? Uh, so that actually happened after my second deployment, um, when I started noticing other symptoms of PTSD. It freaked me out for a long time. I'm pretty used to it now when it happens. But the first time it happened, like, waking up to be mentally there and not be able to move your body in the middle of the night, you know it's nighttime. It's fucking, it's scary as fuck to be immobile in the darkness and not be able to move. Because you're coming out of uh, like a dream state, uh, there's still some of those chemicals that are in your brain to cause hallucinations. Like, I saw everything from a like a witch to like a dark shadow man in the corner to auditory hallucinations, and one time a like a physical hallucination where it felt like something came up behind me and like ripped like a chunk of my scalp off. Like I didn't feel pain with it, but it definitely certainly felt like my skin had been pulled and like ripped off. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever, but that's in the hallucination how it felt. I was so scared of sleeping that I tried to look for ways to get around it, and I looked into what's called wake-induced lucid dreaming, wild for short. I figured I couldn't have sleep paralysis if I just did lucid dreaming instead. Uh, it did not work out that way, and I ended up having more sleep paralysis as a result of trying that. Was it wild? <laughs> yes, very wild. <laughs> I'm so used to it now that it has to be really excessive for me to remember it. And if it's a really bad night like that, I'll probably just end up staying awake because I don't want to, like, get back into bed and potentially get right back into it. I've actually had a pretty good idea of what causes it. I don't know if anyone's ever had this happen to them, but uh, f feeling sleep set in and fighting it, feeling that, that, that falling feeling. Really? And I assume that at some points when I'm coming up out of, like, a REM cycle and I'm feeling it coming back down in, that I'll fight it and get stuck in a sleep paralysis episode. Like, I'm trying to fight from being, like, too vulnerable or, like, being too asleep. And it makes sense because, like, air crew gunships, gunships were always on alert. We'd be in the middle of, like, the nighttime sleeping, and since somebody would kick my door down and be like, just scream, tick, you know, like, troops in contact scenario, and you'd have to literally just fucking skyrocket out of bed and just immediately start moving. And I think I also fucked myself because I took naps sometimes on the gunship, but I was also, whilst, like, taking naps on the gunship over a mission, also listening to comms. So I think those th two things combined made it, to me, made it to where I just, like, I can't sleep too deep while I'm taking a nap on the plane because I have to listen to comms, and I can't sleep too deep while in my own room because what if somebody comes in and says there's a tick and I don't wake up and I'm too groggy or whatever. I would take like 15 minute naps. I was like driving for 72 hours straight. Like I didn't leave my driver's seat for 72 hours. There were so many times where like the only chance I would get to sleep were like 15 minute intervals. Just falling asleep with the headset on knowing that like I have to like be awake enough to hear someone talk when they're talking to me on the intercom. You can sleep just not too much. Uh, definitely contributed to like my insomnia right after I got out. I think what I miss more than most any, anything isn't like necessarily the adrenaline. It's not a, a feeling that makes you feel powerful, at least it doesn't for me. Like I, I felt like I could do whatever I needed to in the moment, but I felt when it was life or death, it just felt like something was gonna like reach out and just grab me by the throat. It's not a comfortable feeling. Um, the fuck was I going on about? <laughs> <laughs> do you miss work on the airplanes? Oh, shit, sorry. Long-winded answer. I trailed <laughs> off. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Short answer is yes, I do, but it's because I miss the like the, the sense of accomplishment. You know, a ground party radioing in right before we checked off station being like, you know, thanks for the sleep. What people reached out to you after the first video? Mostly people who also were going through something. Mostly people in the beginning stages of some traumatic event were the ones that were reaching out to me. Hey, you look like you're in a pretty good spot. I want to pick your brain on like how you got there type of thing. Uh, generally looking from, to me for advice, which is kind of like, I can see it. I, can under, I understand why you're reaching out to me. I probably would have done the same had I been where I was after my second deployment and seen a video talking about the same things. I was, at the very, at least very beginning, very receptive to talking at length with people about stuff. I do think at some point I was like, I can't really do 
that much for this many people, and I was just, I kind of backed away. I had a severe panic attack after I saw how many views it was getting. I was like, fuck, dude. <laughs> I knew at that point every gunship guy would see it, and I worried how they would respond to it, whether or not they would uh, ostracize me for it. Turns out they did not, so... That's good. The gunship community uh, is kind of like raised on quiet professionalism, and I felt like I had overstepped my bounds of the quiet professional by talking about it on YouTube. My experience was very niche to the gunship community. I did not expect uh, Army veterans, uh, 11 Bravos, infantry guys to really resonate with it that much. If anything, I kind of expected like 11 Bravos and Marines to be like fucking Pog. <laughs> there were some of those person other than grunt it's not like the twitch thing where it's like play of the game cool thing basically if you're not an infantry man or adopted by an infantry man you're a poke oh uh, you're army so your pronunciation is probably the the right one yeah we call them pokes and then i was also just kind of worried about fuck this is a lot of views and a lot of traction um and i guess i was just a little bit paranoid about like the government <laughs> you know I, I signed an nda non-disclosure agreement and i'm like fuck you know I, I think i'm fine i think i didn't say anything bad but what if something I said towed the line a little bit, and then I fucking have, like, FBI show up and be like, you violated your NDA agreement, uh, time to go to the slammer. Or here's a big fucking fat fine. How do you think you're doing compared to two years ago? Uh, honestly, pretty amazing in comparison. I'm kind of a people person. I hadn't made a whole lot of friends before the pandemic started, after I moved to Texas. So I just kind of felt really trapped. And there were some, some mental hangups where I like, I, like, I wouldn't probably go out of my way to try to make friends. Um, just because there was that creeping fear in the back of my mind that anyone I did form a connection with, if they found out what happened in uh, Hellman River Valley, they would, you know, see me as, like, a monster and just be like, ew, fuck. You know, I'm looking at something grotesque. I think doing that video with you honestly helped me get over some of those hurdles. Uh, it was necessary to kind of open that up to the world so that, like, I could at least see what the feedback was, both good and negative. Even the people who were saying you're a piece of shit, like, uh... KYS yourself it was like oh cool I kind of needed to hear that just because like it's better to hear it have that momentary gut feeling of like oh fuck that hurts in like a emotional reaction sort of way like the tribes like tribalism mm -hmm. thing like oh someone's someone fucking ex like trying to kick me out of the tribe but like both good brain. and bad responses helped me move farther beyond like some of the stuff that was keeping me trapped in the past like every like promo like military photo is always like someone just like standing just pointing off at nothing oh oh god why why is this necessary is this fucking necessary <laughs> look at him jesus christ got that clus clussy <laughs> honestly i'm just enjoying myself as it is it doesn't have to be like really any big events that's probably one of the healthiest mindsets I've ever seen about, like, post-veteran, like, lifestyles. Because, like, so many, like, veterans are just so used to, like, their lives being big event to big event to big event. To just be like, I don't need that. Like, I'm just gonna do my thing and just live. Yeah, I've had so many high-octane experiences that I'm kind of cool with <laughs> things being kind of <laughs> mellow. Who has the best veterans discount? In what context? I will not elaborate. I like getting the veteran discount at museums. Like, that's, like, the only place I ever get, like, asked for, like, hey, do you have a mm -mm. veteran discount? Is at museums. I like it. I don't know why. I just state, do. Uh, state, state parks have pretty good veteran discounts as well. True. Well, the food is, like, so overdone. It's, like, what, like, four or five bucks off your meal? And you're, like, it makes you kind of feel kind of sleazy when you do that, especially yeah. at Applebee's. Like, you're already yeah, sleazy definitely. going to the Applebee's. Like, now you're asking for $45 <laughs> off. You're, like, yeah. Mm -mm, excuse me, Olive Garden. Uh, I want. Can I get a veteran's discount on this endless uh, soup and salad? <laughs> I like how you get a simple question. And we're both like, let's let's just go into a tangent. <laughs> let's fucking let's fucking tear apart Olive Garden. Their spaghetti's all right. Like nothing to write home about. The spaghetti's like I don't know. Like what, what kind of food is that? That's like Mediterranean, right? Like I don't know who makes spaghetti. Spaghetti's stupid. Chicken Alfredo pasta. <laughs> the Italian mob's gonna put a hit out on you. So step away from me. Oh, thank God! Finally, the sweet release of death. <laughs> the VA has earned their reputation with me in terms of healthcare. I will say that. I know that several people swear by them, but every vet or every VA facility is a little bit different. Anyways, I have my clinic that I go to for my regular checkups. And uh, one time, I had to do a blood draw for him. 
for my regular checkup. A week or two later, they came back with blood results and they're like, all right, come on in. We're going to tell you about your blood results. And I get in there and they're like, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to come out and tell you this. You have hepatitis C. And I'm like, the <laughs> fuck do I, what? I'm like, I, I don't have no motherfucking hepatitis C. <laughs> and I don't, I'm like, I don't fucking have this. And they're like, you have it. And I'm like, fuck, maybe I do have it. <laughs> It's like, God damn it, I was overseas a lot. And so like, the wrong cigarette. <laughs> and so I, I went home and I was like, fuck, dude. That's pretty heavy to be diagnosed with hepatitis. And I like called my mom, I'm like, Mom, I guess I have hepatitis. <laughs> what should I do about this? <laughs> and she's like, and she's like, <laughs> and she's like get a fucking second opinion so i go to a civilian doctor get my blood drawn again and they call me in for the results and they're like uh, um you were concerned about having hepatitis and i'm like yes um they're like uh it's clear that you have the antibodies for hepatitis a and b um no indicators for hepatitis c you're good i'm like the va said that i had hepatitis and they're like i don't know what to say uh, you don't have it. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't really know what to okay. tell you, sir. I went back to the VA, the Tomball Clinic. I'm like, can you have this person come explain to me why they diagnosed me with this? And, oh, by the way, I should mention I was waiting there for three hours just to talk with oh, this person. Oh, fuck's sake. And uh, they finally get around to me like, see right here, hepatitis. And they pause and they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're his story of the guy who lit himself on fire on the VA's doorstep. He Is he like the, the same VA. level of legend as like Killdozer? Was Killdozer the dude who like built an armored fucking dozer and went around town like fucking smashing places? Yeah, also a veteran. Um, I don't know if it was the same vibe, but like, yeah, he was. Everyone was like, that dude's a fucking champ. Like, God bless him. Maybe don't do that. But fucking great A work, son. <laughs> uh, what this guy did is he uh, he was trying to get mental health help from the VA and I don't remember the details on it very well but he was kept getting told to like to wait they're organizing it they're scheduling it the, like and all these delays kept piling up so he waited and he waited he waited till one full calendar year he was like okay it's been exactly one year I've gotten zero help so he went to their doorstep doused himself in gasoline and set himself on fire right in front of their office <laughs> and burned himself to death right in front of, like, their front desk reception. <laughs> and everyone was like, Jesus fucking Christ. That is a level of commit I can only aspire to. Glad to know we have that to look forward to when we get out. I've got a, PA, a PTSD diagnosis. So you'd think that there'd be some mm -hmm. level of mental health care in there. Well, no. I called them up while I was doing my appeal. I'm like, you know, I'd like to, you know, get a talk with a therapist. And they're like, is this a, is this a medical emergency? And I'm like... I mean, I'm just trying to get, you know, an appointment with a therapist. I have PTSD. And they're like, is this a medical emergency? And he would just kept asking if it was a medical emergency. I'm like, well, no, it's not a medical emergency. I just want an appointment. I mean, I have PTSD diagnosed by you guys. I feel like at least a little bit of care. They literally couldn't start the process for me, like, going to see them unless I said, like, I'm in distress. And I'm like, well, fuck you, I guess. I'm, I'm not but ever going to say the more I talk to, to you. <laughs> the more I talk to you, the more I feel like this is rapidly becoming a emergency. It's certainly one of those things that I, I, I don't want to say any of those words to the government because the next thing I know, I'm in a fucking psych ward. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the thought of ending up in a government psych ward is scarier to me than Afghanistan <laughs> right now. <laughs> I would rather live on Fort Hood for the rest of my life than wind up for going to a government psych ward for two years. They don't care, take care of you when you're useful to them, much less when you're useless to them. Oh, yeah. They don't take care of you when you're useful to them. What are they going to do to you when you're not? <laughs> when you're useless, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, no, I've talked with some veterans that went through their psych ward process, and it does not sound fun at all. I feel like Houston, because it's such a big city, is just so overtaxed that literally... They don't do any of, like, the, the smaller care. It's literally like, are you going to kill yourself? No, you're wasting our time. Which, like, fair for them prioritizing the people who are going to die and everything, but, like... Maybe if you got ahead a little bit of some of these issues, maybe it wouldn't get down in this part. We don't think here. You're using too much... Uh, if I had gone down the distress route, um, you know, they're going to ask questions like, 
uh, do you have firearms? During a moment of distress, they were going to try to set, remove said fire or firearms from my property, um, you know, by contacting local police, letting them know where I live, and then escorting me down to said hospital. And I'll probably never get those guns back, and I'll probably end up on a registry to not be allowed to firearms. And then I'll also have to deal with uh, whatever the psych ward for the VA is going to be like, because God forbid if it's anything like any Fuck of the that. other experience I've had, it just it opens a whole can of worms. You have to choose between, I really need some help, and I don't want to give up my rights. <laughs> if you want help, you have to buy it with your own rights. <laughs> How long has it been? It's It's been uh, four hours. Nine o'clock. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. We're not giving you easy times. Yeah, I like how Simon was like, oh, we can do that because it'll be a short little thing. And then, uh, four hours <laughs> fucking later. <laughs> this fucking clown. I'm gonna fucking kick your ass. Creepy ass fucking clown.